Hello and everyone, welcome to today's webinar. My name is Alicia and today we're going to be spending some time reviewing added sugars, including regulatory points and working with Genesis R&D to declare added sugars on labels. Before I get into the main topic, let me give you a little background on ESHA research. ESHA was established in 1981 and has grown from offering one of the first nutrition and labeling software solutions to a full suite of products and services, including Genesis R&D Foods that we're taking a look at today, Genesis R&D Supplements, Rex, which is our new regulatory documents search tool, food processor, which is used for dietary analysis, and our consulting services that provides labeling services and specialized expertise for industry. Genesis R&D Foods was introduced in 1991 to help address the need for convenient formula analysis and formatting of NLEA food labels for U.S. regulations. Over the years, Genesis has remained the go-to standard for product development, recipe analysis, and compliant nutrition labels. We also, it also offers restaurant menu analysis and reporting. We offer label modules to prepare compliant labels for the US, Canada, the EU, and Mexico. And just a reminder, if you have any questions about your version, your license, or your account, please get in touch with the ESHA sales team at sales at ESHA.com. We continue to add more topics to the webinar schedule, so stay tuned for additional presentations. When you sign up to receive notices or register for upcoming webinars on the ESHA website, you also have the opportunity to provide us with feedback of the topics that interest or concern you the most. So you can include that input to us and we'll try and address the topics that need to be addressed. You can also view previously recorded webinars on the ESHA website. I have a lot of content to cover today, so we'll go for the full allotted time. But as always, the webinar is being recorded and you will receive a link to the recording and to the slide deck following the webinar. Please note that if you have any questions, send those in right away via the GoToWebinar control panel. I have colleagues standing by to help respond to your questions. And if I don't happen to get back to you during the webinar or my colleagues don't respond, or if your question needs a little more research than the time allows today, we'll follow up with you directly. Today I'll be talking about added sugars based on the FDA labeling definition. FDA regulations and guidance documentation pertaining to added sugars, working with Genesis to record added sugars properly and report those on the label, best practices for checking and documenting your added sugars information, and we'll finish up with Q&A. Over the past few years especially, sources of sugars and sweeteners have come to the forefront of nutritional considerations in nutrition facts labeling. In the US, revisions to the reporting of sugars have caused food manufacturers to reevaluate their products and in some cases reformulate foods and look for alternative ingredients used to sweeten products. With the 2016 FDA final rule for labeling, added sugars was introduced as a new mandatory nutrient to be, include, to be included on the nutrition facts label. Added sugars is listed indented under total sugars on the US label. And for most products, we see the quantitative amount is listed in grams and a percent DV for added sugars is listed. Notice total sugars doesn't have a daily value recommendation, but added sugars does. And the regulations also include options to state sugars, added sugars as less than one gram and as insignificant when amounts per serving qualify to do so. The added sugars percent daily value on the label is calculated from the daily value recommendation of 50 grams. This was arrived at in line with discussions in the dietary guidelines for Americans that the intake of added sugars should be less than 10% of overall calorie intake. So if you start with the general 2,000 calories a day recommendation that's used for labeling, 
apply 449 where we have four calories per gram of sugar, which is a carbohydrate, we see the recommendation to limit added sugars intake to 200 calories a day or 50 grams a day. And so again, this DV is a recommendation, but it's not try and get enough added sugars. It's really presented in that try and make your um, diet contain less than 50 grams of sugar each day. The dietary guidelines for Americans also stress the importance of following healthy eating patterns that contain nutrient dense foods and limit empty calories. By consuming too many empty calorie foods, we might reach our suggested calories level before we have consumed foods that provide a beneficial balance of components like protein, fat, fiber, vitamins, and minerals that we need in order to grow and thrive. Added sugars was added to the Nutrition Facts label to help identify where foods land on this idea of nutrient-dense versus empty calorie scale. And the percent DV for added sugars is declared as a way to help identify and limit the intake of added sugars. So here you can see examples of various types of foods that all contain some form of sugars. On the left are whole foods that contain all naturally occurring sugars as part of the complete nutrient profile of the food. And on the right, you see sugar ingredients like white sugar and honey, whose sugars are considered added sugars. And in the middle, we have foods that contain a combination of naturally occurring sugars and added sugars. It's this middle section that we might need to spend a bit of time and pay attention with regarding declaration of added sugars. For those mixed foods, we need to know how much of the sugar content comes from the whole foods portion, and then if there are, there are any added sugar ingredients that need to be declared as added sugars. For instance, with the mango smoothie, if it's made with sweetened milk, you have naturally occurring sugars coming from the mango and from the milk, but then the sweetener used, or the you know sugars are added to sweeten the milk, then we have added sugars that we need to be concerned about. And something like pizza, you've got the sauce that typically contains sugar in the ingredients list, the bacon, the Canadian bacon is cured with a solution that contains sugar, and then the pineapple might be canned in juice or syrup that is sweetened, so contains added sugars. So all of these added sugars can add up. The 2016 food labeling final rule provides the definition that added sugars are either added during the processing of foods or are packaged as such, and they include sugars free in monodisaccharides, sugars from syrups and honey, and sugars from concentrated fruit or vegetable juices that are in excess of what would be expected from the same volume of 100% fruit or vegetable juice of the same type. And then FDA does provide us with some examples. Examples include white sugar, brown sugar, and other forms of sugar known by their various sugar names, like mono and disaccharide names like dextrose, fructose, lactose. We have honey, molasses, syrups like agave syrup, corn syrups, malt syrup, and maple syrup. And some of the sugars occurring in fruit concentrates, or excuse me, juice concentrates in some applications. These are just examples. There are certainly more that you need to be watchful of. And I mentioned the specific um, sugar names like lactose. Lactose is the sugar from milk. And lactose is present in milk products as a naturally occurring sugar. So the lactose in whole dairy foods, like milk or milk powder, is not considered or declared as added sugars. In those cases, the sugars come with that full nutrient pro profile of the milk product. However, lactose as an isolated sugar has a standard of identity stated in the CFR. So if you're using isolated lactose as an ingredient itself, the sugars from that ingredient would count as added sugars. 
So an ingredient that meets the standard of identity for lactose also meets the FDA definition of added sugars. So again, when we start isolating sugars, um, they're no longer contained in the whole foods, then that changes the nature of the declaration and whether they may meet the added sugars definition. As part of the FDA definition for added sugars, we see that sugars from juice concentrates in some cases may need to be declared as added sugars. Whether or not you must declare added sugars from juice concentrates depends on the content of the juice concentrate as well as the final moisture content of the, of the finished product. So again, here's that idea because Juice concentrates are sometimes used to sweeten foods, and because the juicing process strips away some of the nutritional benefits that the whole food form provides, we end up with ingredients that have higher sugars concentration than the whole food form, and some of those sugars can contribute to added sugars in the finished foods. And then just a note, on the other hand, purees and puree concentrates when the um, the food, the whole food is just blended or turned into puree, it still contains that whole food content and hasn't been, hasn't become a product that isolates or concentrates the sugars. Those are considered to contain the whole food composition, so sugars and sugars from the purees and puree concentrates are not considered added sugars by the FDA. So again, consider is it isolated or is it a whole food form? to help you work with added sugars. FDA guidance that was published in 2018 and revised in 2019 speaks to the FDA's view on certain aspects of added sugars. This guidance presents detailed Q&A and multiple examples for calculating added sugars from juice concentrates, and it provides much more technical detail as well as information regarding what is and what is not considered added sugars. It includes references to BRICS content for the juices and includes comments on ingredients and products that experience hydrolysis or fermentation in terms of added sugars. So this is a very helpful resource and we're going to provide you with a link to this document in the follow-up email. We also have a series of cheat sheets available on the ESHA website. This is the sheet for added sugars. This provides at a glance the information that I'm talking about today. So there are definitions, um, declarations of rounding levels, and more presented on this cheat sheet. And Genesis does include the various rounding and statement options in the label settings. In general, labeling regulations offer some options in terms of labeling minimal amounts. So what if your ingredient list shows a sugar ingredient, but the amount is less than one gram or less than 0.5 grams and rounds to zero on the label? When appropriate and allowed, you could consider using that less than one gram statement or the not a significant source of statement on your label to help consumers wade through um, seeing sugar or sugar type ingredients in the ingredient list, but then seeing minimal amounts on the label. In December of 2018, House Resolution 2, also known as the Farm Bill or the Agriculture Improvement Act, brought us an exemption to labeling of added sugars for single ingredient sugar products. The bill states the food labeling requirements under Section 403 of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act shall not require that nutrition facts labels of any single ingredient sugar, honey, agave, or syrup, including maple syrup, that is packaged and offered for sale as a single ingredient food, bear the declaration includes so many grams of added sugars. So this overrode the initial FDA final rule. And then the FDA provided guidance on how to address the labeling of these single ingredient sugar products. So this is talking about labels on a bag of white sugar or the label on a jar of honey or a container of maple syrup. The FDA guidance instructed that the added sugars line can remain um, with the nutrition facts, within the nutrition facts label, but with only the percent DB declared. 
And then the FDA also suggested that a dagger symbol be placed after added sugars percent dB. And that refers to a footnote included at the bottom of the nutrition facts label that clarifies the content of the added sugars. So you can see here on the example label, the footnote that states, one serving adds 17 grams of sugar to your diet and represents 34% of the daily value for added sugars. So again, it's informing consumers that eating this type of food can contribute to um, empty or those extra calories that you want to be watchful of in your overall diet. And you can see here that we have some very different looking labels and added sugars information presented depending on the nature of the finished food or the individual ingredients. So the first label shows a fresh apple and it's reporting zero added sugars. All of the sugars in that food occur naturally and in, are in a whole food accompanied by the rest of the nutrient profile. A mixed food then might report total sugars and added sugars with either equal values or total sugars might be greater than added sugars. You just wanna make sure that added sugars is never reported higher than total sugars. The single ingredient sugar product like sugar or honey can then list the added sugars per the guidance showing only the percent DV and then using the dagger symbol on the footnote to clarify. And then lastly, the um, certain sweetened cranberry products can also be labeled in a, a special manner. So they can also use a dagger symbol on the added sugars line. Note that they are reporting quantitative value for added sugars and the percent DV on the added sugars line, but then a dagger is included. And that can lead to a statement occurring outside of the nutrition facts label that just talks about the sugars have been added to this cranberry product due to palatability to make it a little more tastier and sweeter. And Genesis does include all of these options for the label. Also in Genesis, we have two separate fields, one for total sugars and one for added sugars. Both of these fields must be populated for all ingredients to report accurate sugars information on your labels. So again, when you have a whole food like an apple, you report the total sugar content, but then added sugars would be zero because it's all naturally occurring and within the whole food. For ingredients that meet the definition of added sugars like white granulated sugar or honey or maple syrup, then the total sugars value and the added sugars value would be the same. All of the sugars contained in that food would count towards added sugars because they meet the FDA definition. And then for mixed foods, again, we have to know how much is um, of the total content of the sugar for that food, how much is coming from added sugars and report those values appropriately. If there is any question, say you get an ingredient from a supplier and you're not sure about the added sugars content, then reach out to them. Reach out to your supplier for clarification. And as we commonly do in these webinars, mention the spreadsheet report. So I just wanna remind you, use the spreadsheet report to review all recipes in Genesis. The spreadsheet report provides that view of the ingredients and the nutrient detail for each, and it also indicates any missing values with dashes. So if you see dashes on your spreadsheet report, especially for mandatory label nutrients, you want to be sure that you fill those in. And then you populate the ingredient record that's missing that value that will pull through to the recipes using that ingredient and then also report on your labels. In the CFR, there is a requirement that we make and keep records of the amount of sugars that are included in the foods. This is a human determination. There's not a, a test that is run to determine the added sugars versus the total. So we have to document very carefully. And this includes um, documenting the sugars occurring in the content of the food, as well as considering any added sugars that might be contributed as a result of the processing of the food. We wanna look for added sugars on ingredient supplier sheets and report those correctly. 
added sugars, again, can be equal or less than total sugars, but we don't want to report to or added sugars greater than total sugars. That would be a red flag on the label and showing that the data is incorrect. For single ingredient sugars in Genesis, again, we enter total sugars equal to the added sugars. And the labels are the spec sheets, even still, even though the um, new regulations have been in place for several years now, we still see spec sheets that might not report added sugars at all or report added sugars as zero. But again, just remember that if it's a single, that single ingredient type sugar item, once you've added it to another food, that is considered added sugars, and those need to be reported appropriately. And again, if added sugars aren't reported by the supplier or you need clarification, get in touch with your supplier and ask for updated detail. A couple things to consider if the ingredient list identifies that the product doesn't contain any added sugars, then it might be that you can determine that this, this product has no added sugars. You want to be confident in that decision, but if you can determine the content of the food and confidently report that added sugars value is zero, um, then document what you've determined and keep that with your records. But again, if in doubt, contact the supplier. You just, you want your values to be accurate and you want to be sure that your documentation supports the values that you report. To help you with maintaining your documentation, Genesis includes several tools or fields that you can capture information. Genesis includes notes fields on ingredient and recipe records. There's the audit trail feature and attachment features. So with the attachment function, you can attach doc documents directly to your ingredient and your recipe files in Genesis to help keep that information gathered and traceable. So at this time, I'm going to move over into Genesis and we'll just take a look at where some of these features and fields can be found. As always with Genesis, I do like to point out the About button. Today we're working in version 11.11 11, um, with the cloud installations or subscriptions. You will be running the current version of the software with a current subscription. If you have a desktop installation, then, you know, if there's any question, check that version number. And you can also see your account information and license information using the About button. So then from there, I'm just going to open up an ingredient. We're going to take a look at a couple of these different ingredients that I've talked about just to show how the sugars fields are presented. So here, when I open an ingredient record, I'm going to click on the nutrients tab. And here we can see the nutrients reported for this item. I mentioned the nutrients to view. And so here in this view, it is telling me which set of nutrients I have selected. Um, this is the US 2016 mandatory label set of nutrients. And we can see that it's showing total sugars and added sugars. For this fresh apple that's a whole food, we have the total sugar content. None of the sugars in this particular food count as added sugars, so we have a zero value entered for the added sugars. And then I'll pull up a honey ingredient. Sorry, let me choose a slightly different one. And again, the same idea, except this is a, an ingredient that meets the FDA definition of added sugars. So again, the total sugars and added sugars field. This is 100 grams of honey that contains about 82 grams of sugars. All of those sugars present are considered added sugars. So we have those values reported as the same. And then one more, we'll take a look at a chocolate milk. Again, looking at the nutrients field, and for an item like this, it's sweetened, but we do have some sugars occurring naturally from the milk. So we have the total sugars content of naturally occurring sugars plus the, the sugars contributed by those sugar ingredients used to sweeten this food. A portion of those sugars need to be reported 
as added sugar. So we have different values for an item like this. And if you don't see the added sugars value or field here, you can find that in a couple ways. One is to choose the show all nutrients button. And this will display all of the nutrients available in Genesis, including any that you've added. So if you've added any nutrients to your software, that will access those. The other is to select a different set of nutrients to view. So up on the top ribbon here, we have the nutrients to view button. And in Genesis, the nutrients to view sets are shown under this line, you'll see all of those that come pre-populated with Genesis. So we have various sets. Some are um, food group related, some are labeling related. So we have Canada, EU, Mexico, and US sets of nutrients to view. The check mark indicates which set you have selected and you can choose between any of these at any time. And then if you do want to add nutrients to view sets like I've done here, up in this top section or where mine are listed, click modify and then edit. When you click modify, it shows you the nutrients included in the set you already have selected. So go modify, edit to assemble a new set of nutrients. On the left hand side of the screen, we have the available nutrients. Here are the ones shown selected. So just use the arrows or double click to move nutrients back and forth. If you want to add more, move them over here. If you want to omit any in this from the set that you already have selected, move those back over. When you've chosen all the nutrients that you want to see in your set, click OK. And then from there, choose save as and name this set of nutrients to view something that's meaningful to you so you can remember what nutrients are included or what project this set of nutrients addresses. So then I want to take a look at some recipes. And just again, with the focus on added sugars, how are these displayed when I look at my recipes? So here's one recipe. I'm going to show the label because this may sometimes occur and be kind of puzzling. If you have a label and see dashes on your label, that's certainly non-compliant. And what this indicates is that all of the ingredients in your recipe are missing that particular nutrient. So again, with the 2016 labels, added sugars, was included as a new nutrient. Vitamin D, potassium, those are now mandatory nutrients, so we may not have seen data on previous supplier sheets or sources of information. You gotta have something reported there. So I'll just um, open another recipe to give us another view on what we might see and what to check. So again, I'll take a look at the label. And I'm looking at that, I see nutrient values, it's looking pretty good, all the information I need, but this doesn't give the whole picture. And that's why we say it's so important to take a look at the spreadsheet report for all of your recipes. In this case, I'm looking at my nutrient columns and I see dashes. So I have a couple ingredients that are showing dashes in my added sugars column. And I know that it's a mandatory nutrient. I know that I need to report those properly. And I do see that one of these ingredients is a sugars type ingredient. So I know that the sugars coming from this should also be reported as added sugars. So I need to correct those. There are a couple ways I could make the corrections to this recipe. I do need to edit the ingredient record. So I could go file, open ingredient, and then open the ingredients that I need to correct. Or from within the recipe here, if I right click on the ingredient itself and then open item, this is opening the record of, in this case, this butter ingredient and I can populate the information. So I have a total sugars value here, but I need to um, 
I need to include an added sugars value. In the case of this ingredient, there's no sugar added to this butter, and so I enter my added sugars value of zero. Save the record. And then that will populate in the ingredient. So if I take a look at my spreadsheet, now I have a value here. So I want to do the same for the molasses. Again, right click, open ingredient, go to the nutrients tab. I can edit right there on the fly. Of course, I want to make sure that the information I'm reporting is correct. And in this case, because molasses meets the definition of added sugars, I know that I want to report the same value as total content, total sugar content, all of those need to be reported as added sugars. So I populate that added sugars field, save my ingredient, and then again it updates the record for that. So now I have 2.16 coming from the molasses added sugars, and then here, before this had 11 grams of total sugars, nine grams of added sugars, by updating that ingredient record, and then we have rounding happening for these label values. That's more in line with what, what I should be reporting. So again, just be mindful of reviewing those spreadsheets and being sure that all the information that's required is populated. We'll do a couple more um, recipes, take a look at a few more here. I have a honey recipe here. So I wanna show you what the label for honey might look like. So this is a recipe, it just has honey in it, but in order to produce a label, I have to create a recipe that contains this ingredient, and then I'll view the label. So by default, we're seeing the total sugars and the added sugars lines reported. But again, because of the Farm Bill and because of the direction that we've received from the FDA, we can show a slightly different label. So if I click on Edit Label and go to my Format Options, if you scroll down in the U.S. section, we have an Added Sugars area for working with the label and the Edit Label settings. This is a single ingredient sugar item. If I check that, I see a little more um, description of what this feature option is used for, and I'm gonna click OK. And now you can see we have the text and the quantitative amount of the added sugars line has been omitted. We have the dagger symbol with the percent DV for added sugars, and then it has placed a footnote down at the bottom of the label describing the content of the sugars here. So that again is for a recipe for a single ingredient sugar item. And then one more recipe, the cranberry option. So again, cranberries are tart. It's common practice that cranberry products are sweetened. So for dried cranberries and uh, cranberry juice that's sweetened, um, we can do, again, a little bit special formatting for this label. I already had this option selected, but I'll show you where to find it. So with the cranberry item, this is a cranberry juice. We're reporting total sugars. We're reporting quantitative amount for added sugars, as well as the percent DV. The cran for cranberry product labels like these, there's the dagger symbol, and then it is directing to a an explanatory statement that's placed outside of the nutrition and facts label. So you could put this somewhere on your packaging, not inside the label itself. And again, that option is also edit label, format options, in the US section under that added sugars area, this line, show palatability symbol and statement. And so by default, I had already populated this, but by default, this field, the text will be blank. So when I check this option, I also need to choose what I'm gonna say, what that explanatory note is going to say because um, FDA gave us several options. It doesn't have to be stated in a specific way. It does need to be clear, but I've included this statement. And so when I check this option for the cranberry product label, I get the dagger symbol and then the note outside of the label. 
just to help consumers understand the sugars that are present in those cranberry type items. And again, the um, FDA guidance document that we're, we'll share provides much more detail on the labeling of the cranberry products and the single sugar items. So I also mentioned the record keeping and the importance of documentation when working with added sugars or um, you know learning about this and labeling and we have several notes fields here within ingredient records as well as the recipes here so you can see the notes fields and I mentioned before about using notes fields in previous webinars you can change the titles of these notes so if you always need to use one set of notes field as your internal documentation versus the other notes field as external or for whatever purposes just be mindful of how those fields are used and who's using those for what purposes then we have the audit trail feature which needs to be turned on so either contact your account administrator at your organization or get in touch with uh, ESHA tech support if you need assistance with the audit trail but what the audit trail does is any changes that are made to a record are then noted so you get a notation a time stamp and the user the software user's name is noted so you can trace the changes of any records that are happening with your ingredients or your recipes. It's a helpful documentation tool. And then we also have the attachments feature in Genesis. So within your ingredient records or even the, the recipe records, in the recipe, choose the edit recipe button and then you'll see the attachments feature here. So this is allowing us to you know, drop and drag files within this recipe file or browse your computer just like you would typically for finding files and then bring those in and attach those directly to the record here. So again, it's the idea of keeping all your required information or helpful um, references or about decisions you've made on a recipe or other aspects of your ingredients or recipes all in one handy place. So that's what I have to show you in the software. Let me just switch back to our slides. And as always, we mentioned in addition to these webinars that we offer, we offer formal instruction on Genesis. So if you need to learn all about the software and uses of the software, we have training classes that dive much deeper into working with the software features, as well as discussions on regulations and working through example formulas and specific scenarios. But you're also welcome. It's a great opportunity to bring your questions to our training team for getting some great answers and addressing some very important topics on using Genesis and about labeling. We do have both in-person classes as well as online instruction. The schedule has been evolving a bit. So we have uh, several upcoming online classes on the schedule. We also have an in-person training occurring in July at our Oak Brook facility. So if you're interested in that, please ask or look into more details on those options there. Um, note the format of the online classes has changed a bit in order to accommodate schedules and to offer training in a bit more digestible pieces in the online format. Those online courses now occur, occur in shorter blocks of time over extended or extended over the course of more days. So shorter blocks, a few more days. So you have the four day training for the professional level courses and a two day training at the advanced level for our online classes. You can find the registration information on the ESHA website. And I do want to mention, we'll have information on the website for our upcoming regulatory seminar. We're introducing short course seminars to focus on regulations and product labeling aspects. So they don't include Genesis instruction. They don't include software instruction, but focus more on regulations and regulatory aspects. So you can find registration and cost information on the ESHA website along with the training information.
And of course, if you have any questions about classes, the content, or if you need to schedule a group training for your organization, please get in touch with the training team at training at esha.com. And you can stay in touch with ESHA in a variety of ways. You can reach out to us by phone, email, or find us in on ESHA website links, as well as our LinkedIn community. I want to mention the eLearning Center is available on our the ESHA website, but again, that directs you to tutorials, uh, previously recorded webinars, and other materials that are quite helpful in navigating the regulations, as well as the Genesis software. Stay in touch with us with our blog. You can subscribe to the ESHA blog and newsletters as well. So I'm going to jump into some Q&A. We have a few to cover. So the first one, what does the FDA mean by will it use enforcement discretion and guidance documents? And that's a great question. We see this language throughout the FDA guidance documentation, not just the added sugars documentation, but um, FDA guidance for industry express options based on the FDA's current thinking on certain topics. So if we've seen a rule come into play, but then industry or groups provide feedback to the FDA or the FDA notices we need to make adjustments here, then the FDA may publish guidance documentation to give us some options. So if certain practices like the label format of the single ingredient sugar products haven't made their way through the typical channels. So the Farm Bill was not the typical regulatory channels that we usually see food labeling laws go through. Um, when those are published, we can work from FDA guidance to get more direction and instruction on how we should handle some of these labeling topics. And the in that guidance, it typically states that the FDA will use enforcement discretion if a manufacturer chooses to use the options that are outlined in the guidance. So that means FDA will consider the options that have been presented in the guidance and the instructions, the application of those options that were presented in the guidance, and then determine if a manufacturer is following the guidance or if they're, if they're falling outside of any compliance. So, you know, we have final rules that we need to comply with or if given options through guidance we can follow those but we still need to be presenting or creating um, compliant labels and FDA will consider the context of options available before they might take disciplinary action so like product recall fines or even legal action kind of based on what options were presented to the industry The next question we have is, is dried fruit considered added sugars? So unsweetened dried fruit is not considered added sugars. Dried fruit, again, contains that whole food profile. So you're getting all the, all the other um, nutrient content that comes along with the whole food. And so that's not con considered added sugars. On the other hand, if we have sweetened fruit, so it's dried sweetened fruit, sugars that were that are coming from the sweetened sweetening product. So we have fruit that's dried, but it's had sugar added to it. Then the sugars coming from the sugar ingredient used to sweeten the fruit would be considered added sugars. Next question is, my supplier doesn't declare added sugars on the spec sheet at all. How do I know if I should report added sugars? So I mentioned that if the spec sheet is, you know, say it's from a dried fruit that hasn't been sweetened and you know that all of the sugars are total sugars and nothing has been added to sweeten that item, you might be able to identify that this product has no added sugars. I can report it confidently as zero. But again, you want to be confident about your interpretation. If there's any doubt, then get in touch with your supplier and request updated information or clarification about their product. Next question is, are sugar alcohols considered added sugars? Sugar alcohols are not considered added sugars, they are reported, they can be reported separately within the Nutrition Facts panel. So um, if you have 
sugar alcohols in your product and choose to, excuse me, choose to report it on the label or if you're making a claim and must report sugar alcohols on your label, those are reported separately and the sugar alcohol does not contribute, it's not meeting the definition of added sugars. And then if your product contains one type of sugar alcohol, you can declare that specifically on the label. So if your product only contains sorbitol, you can, rather than listing added sugars, you could say sorbitol within the nutrition packs label, but they don't contribute to added sugars. Are trehalose and dextrin considered added sugars? So trehalose or trehalose is a disaccharide. So yes, that meets the FDA definition of added sugars. Dextrin, um, there are a group of products that dextrin may fall under, and that is the hydrolysis treated ingredients. So depending on how an ingredient is manufactured, may undergo a process that results in um, sugars that would count towards added sugars. So dextrin falls under that because of the way it's processed, the sugars coming from the dextrin would be counted as added sugars. The dextrin itself is an ingredient, not necessarily, but the sugars content of that. And again, the FDA guidance that we'll share goes into much more detail about products that undergo hydrolysis and what count towards added sugar, as well as things like fermentation. Allulose, how do I label allulose or a product made with allulose? So allulose contributes to total carbohydrates. So in Genesis, you would want to include intra carbohydrates value, but per FDA guidance, allulose can be excluded from the reporting of total sugars and the reporting of added sugars. So you'd have a carbohydrates value, but zero for total sugars and zero for added sugars. They're not considered contributing to those. You can also use a specific caloric con conversion of 0.4 grams, so 0 0.4, excuse me, 0 0.4 calories per gram of allulose. And we'll also share the FDA guidance on allulose with the follow-up materials to help you with that. So you can see labeling of added sugars has introduced many questions and there are certainly more, but that is all that we have time for today. So thank you for attending our webinar and have a great day.